Hi, it's Ray from IELTS Focus. Uh, today I want to look at cohesive devices. Um, in the marking criteria in IELTS, there's something called coherence and cohesion. Um, coherence means that the, the reader can understand the points that are being made. So the essay is well written, it's very logical, um, it has a natural flow to it, and it's easy to understand. Um, problems with cohesion come about when someone has poor grammar or word choice, or maybe they're using very long, complex sentences, or complicated sentences, should I say, and it just doesn't make sense. So that means that um, the coherence is quite weak. Um, so part of the, um, the coherence is cohesive devices, and these are words that link sentences together, and it gives the writing a natural flow. So the, the essay flows naturally, and it links well, the ideas logically connect in. And these are words like, um, you know, however, or furthermore, in addition, there's quite a lot of them actually. So I'd like to get straight into the video and have a look. Okay, so cohesion in essays. Um, this is an important skill for getting a good score in uh, the writing section. Um, the IELTS marking criteria for writing, um, coherence and cohesion accounts for 25% of your marks. So it's important to use them correct, correctly and sparingly. Sparingly means that you don't overuse them. Coherence means it's easy to follow your ideas and the writing makes sense. So therefore the, the cohesion makes the ideas connect logically. So in this lesson, uh, we're going to look at you know, what are cohesive devices, how they're marked in the exam, the marking criteria, some key points, um, some examples of faulty or mechanical use, and then there's some example sentences with uh, cohesive devices used properly. Uh, there's also a list of cohesive devices, just to show you how many there are. There's quite a lot of them. So let's have a look at the next so what are cohesive devices exactly? Well, these are often called by different names. Maybe they're called linkers or discourse markers or transitional words. There's various names for these. And basically they're, they're words like, you know, however, or for example, um, in addition, although, etc. And they help to link the sentences and ideas throughout your writing, uh, making it smoother and much easier to follow. They need to be used correctly and effectively, but a lot of candidates have trouble with this, or maybe they're using them too much or too little. So in the exam, this is how they're marked. You can see with uh, band five, um, inadequate, inaccurate use, or maybe they're overused. Um, band 6, um, they're used well, but um, in many cases, or in some cases, should I say, um, they could be faulty or they seem kind of like mechanical or memorized. Band 7, they're used appropriately. There may be some um, overuse, maybe uh, some slight mistakes here and there, but it's not too serious. And Band 8 is, uh, you can see they're managed very well. So, um, as I say, that's the marking, the marking criteria there. Now, some candidates, they put these um, linkers or cohesive devices in, in every sentence, or sometimes every two sentences, and they think it will impress the examiner. But actually, this is going to damage your essay. It's going to cause problems, and you could end up with uh, a band five in the essay. If you look at band seven or band eight essays, um, you can see that the cohesive devices are used very well, they're effective. And if you look at the high level um, band scores, like band eight or nine, there's actually not many cohesive devices. Um, and when they are used, they, they seem to be very effective. So it's not necessary to have them all over the essay. Just one or two for each paragraph actually is fine. Um, these are also important in writing task one when you're writing about um, pie charts or bar graphs or maybe you're ordering information, 
um, and you need to connect sentences that they come in quite handy for writing task one also. So you've got to be careful when you're using these. Here are two examples that were taken from an essay. And the first one is the government should tackle the issue of river pollution. In addition, the problem of factory emissions need uh, has to be resolved. So in this case, it's extra information in addition. You could say furthermore, uh, also, or additionally, and in the next uh, sentence, it's actually the same sentence. It's exactly the same, but the only difference is the co cohesive device, um, however. So the meaning changes now, because um, in the first sentence above, it showed um, contrast, but in the second sentence, it puts emphasis on the issue of factory emissions and that they need to be resolved first. So this just shows that you need to be very careful when you use them. You shouldn't just memorize like lists of these devices and just plug them into the essay. You gotta, you gotta really work with them. You gotta really find out how, how they're used properly and, and practice using them in your essays and then make sure you get feedback on these you must get feedback on your essays from an expert who can tell you where you're going wrong with these. Um, so now we're going to look at some examples of uh, faulty use. So again, the marking criteria for band six says that um, cohesive devices are used effectively, but the cohesion within or between the sentences may be faulty or mechanical. Now, what does it mean, faulty? Here is a paragraph from an essay. It's actually around about band six. Um, we've got, despite of the dangers of eating too much junk food, people are still consuming these types of food and risking their health. In addition, there's a growing number of people turning to healthy eating these days. Moreover, many more are becoming vegetarian. On the other hand, junk food's tasty, so many people are eating it. Now, straight away, it just doesn't look right because the first of all, the word despite, uh, despite of, doesn't need of, it should just be um, despite. So that's that's faulty use. Um, and in addition, it's, again, it's faulty use. It's not adding information. It's kind of contrasting information. It'd be better to say, however, for example, or on the other hand, maybe. Um, and the word moreover, it just doesn't seem to fit well here. It looks odd. And another thing is that they're overused. There's four in that paragraph, four cohesive devices. So that wouldn't score a band seven. Uh, mechanical use. Uh, mechanical would mean that they're used unnaturally. Well, in many cases, they seem memorized and the candidate has just plugged them into the paragraph. And this is why you should never memorize sentences. Um, for example, uh, here's a, a sentence in red. As outlined in the above essay, I agree with the view put forward. It, I mean, it looks, you know, grammatically kind of correct, but it's actually odd. It seems odd to me because it seems memorized. And that's another thing to be careful of is just memorizing, you know, chunks of sentences that you can just plug into the essay. This is not how IELTS writing works. You shouldn't be memorizing stuff. So. Here's a whole list of um, cohesive devices. You can you know, pause the video and have a closer look. We've got results and consequences, rephrasing, contrasting, giving opinions. Um, there's some more here. Again, you can pause the video. Um, concluding, in a conclusion, you just need uh, one of those three to conclude or to, in conclusion to sum up. Um, when you want to emphasize something, um, causes. Reformulation means rewording. I think I covered that earlier. Um, and in addition, comparison, when we're giving examples, we can use those and sequencing. Sequencing is very good for um, describing a process, um, especially in writing task one, when you might get some kind of process where you've got to write about that. So you can pause the video and have a look at those if you like. Now, the important thing is that um, you know, this is a list of them. You shouldn't be just memorizing the whole list, but it just gives you an idea of how many there are.
and how they can be used. Uh, let's look at some example sentences. So as I said earlier, don't memorize lists of these. Practice them in the writing. Um, remember, you only need one or two for every paragraph, so you don't have to go too crazy about it. You don't have to use too many of these. Uh, reading is very good. If, if you read a lot, you can see how they're used in, in, in the reading passage, especially in academic text. And you can take notes of how, how many there are in a passage. So we've got some sentences here. Um, the first one is um, giving an, an example. Um, the second one is emphasizing and giving an example. Uh, the third one is um, addition. So you can pause the video if you want to have a look in more detail there. Um, we've got some more here. Um, in this one we've got uh, contrasting, giving, a, giving an example, namely. Um, addition. Um, the third one is um, causes and results, so we can say due to or consequently. And the last one is giving an opinion. So, um, as I say, you may want to um, pause the video and kind of like study these a little bit in more detail. Well, thanks for your time. And uh, if you check out IELTSFocus.com, there's a lot more lessons and for free lessons and tips to help you get a band seven or more in your writing. Okay, thanks a lot.